Uh, next one is uh, from Ben. Hey Lars, I have a question. I will try to answer it. I am trying to create a wheel with spokes. Yeah, so this one here, I definitely want to do because I think this one is kind of really interesting, especially if you're fairly new. I didn't switch the camera over, there you go. This one here, um, Ben sent me this. So trying to come up with a couple of different ways that you can use, um, you can use parameters to get spokes and have it, it updates when you get spokes. Um, so let's go in and look at that fairly quickly here because I think this is a good one. Um, so let's open up a new document and I'm gonna do pretty much what I think Ben kind of like did in his first one. So I'm gonna open up a sketch and let's do C for circle and let's throw up a circle here, 250. And um, I am going to offset and I'm gonna Write this out, minus 15, and C for circle, do a center circle here that's 50. Um, and then you could, and, and we wanna use parameters to control this. So then, um, let me go over and do a two point rectangle here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a midpoint from here to the origin. And then I'm gonna do a tangent the tangent relationship from this face to this face. And then I'm just gonna control the width of this. Okay. So what you could do, and this is what I think that Ben, and that Ben played around with this. I'm not saying that Ben was lost here. I think actually he, he, he maybe got close to a solution. What you could do here was you could go in and say, all right, I wanna do a circular pattern. Um, and the objects I wanna do is these fall here and I want to do it around the center point. So now I have three, right? And if I finish this sketch and now you go into parameters, change parameters. And in here, you will see that you actually under sketch, it's sitting right there. We can actually control this. So if I change this to five, hit okay. Boom, look at that. Do you see that? Let's go ahead and do that again. Modify, change parameters, change this to eight, hit okay, boom. You see how that is updating and you're thinking that is awesome. Uh, now, then if you go now and you say, okay, let's extrude this and we went in and we select it. Now I'm gonna have a mess on my hands. I'm selecting everything in here. This would have been easy if I only had had three, wouldn't it? Maybe I could window select this. Somebody's yelling at me. Um, but that is what happens when I am doing live and not preparing enough. Do, 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 do. Plus, I don't mind left clicking. Okay. Um, right now we have a, a, a great spoke, key, well, spoke, whatever. The problem is that when we go back in now and we change the parameters, and this is what, what, what Ben realized is that when we go back to three, yeah, this is not good. Why is that? Well, the problem with this is actually that this is happening in a timeline fashion. So the way Fusion does this is it, it, it works down here in history. It does this first, then it does this. What means that when we are changing numbers inside of the first sketch, it doesn't know when we go in and edit this one, really things are missing in here. like. Then now when we change this to three, there's really not 22 instances anymore. There's a lot fewer. Uh, maybe if I go in and I go the other way, this will be easier to understand. Whoops, I didn't select everything. I'll select this one here. Right, beautiful, beautiful thing here. We go in and we, we now we're going to change this to eight. It will become eight in the sketch, but that is not what was selected in the extrusion. So it does this, it gets confused because it doesn't know what happened afterwards. So the trick is, instead of doing this, let's open a new file. The trick is to have the update and the parameters happening as the last thing and not inside of the sketch. So let's go in here and draw this 250. And we had an O for offset. 
minus 15 and we had c for circle this was 50. Um, the, the easiest way actually is to bring this bring this out and probably bring it into a couple of different sections i would start bringing it out of you know simplify your sketches as much as you can so i'll create this as if okay this is all good now i'm going to go ahead and create a new sketch and uh and for that one i'm going to create one fan blade or whatever we want to call it do that send it to the origin like that now i'm going to actually p for project to make sure i get that edge there so i can do a tangent between this and that edge that's good and let's just create that at 25. uh so now i'm going to extrude this out right to some kind of a thickness whatever i'm going to make that as a join okay with me so far now i'm going to go in and do a um do a pattern as a feature so circle a pattern and i'm going to actually so I'm gonna select phases i'm going to select feature so i just can select that feature circulating around that edge there and now let's leave that at three but now that is the last thing that is happening what happens when we go into change parameters and we go in here, you will see that that is also sitting in here. So now when we go in and change this to five, we get five because that's the last thing that is happening. So nothing is solving after this. So this will literally be our, our last thing that happens. See, the problem could be that maybe this is a good way to illustrate this. If I go in now and I, Let's go change. Oops, let's go back into the parameters and change this to back to three. That was our original. See how nice it updates. If I now start adding fillets to these, and this is just how this is, friends. This is just um, how parametric modeling works. Um, that it's all history based. So if we go in here, we now add some kind of a fillet to these spokes beautiful right if i go back in again and i change that parameter in there to eight you see how it's only some of them that's getting fillets because the the chains happens here and now the fillets comes after so what do you need to do well you need to take that into account and the way to take that into account is to get this fillet back before we're doing anything so we would actually go back down here and say all right so let's go back in and change and it's actually easier to for me now to go back to three because that's where i kind of like started right and say all right what is happening before my my revolve here remember how in the revolve we did the feature of one well maybe it's easier if i go back in to number one now add my fillet in here at five, right? So now that is in there. This is all good. When I go back now and I go in and edit this one, instead of just selecting that one feature to fill it, I'm or to object, I'm gonna select that fillet also as part of it. Select those two again. Or maybe I can't select. Hang on, let me just delete that. I think I have to multi-select here. It's like these two. Hold down control. Let's do a circular pattern. Now are they both selected? And uh, now you will see I got the fill that's in there because this one is capturing both these two. And now again, the um, the parameter is now controlling because that's the last thing. Now you will see all of them have fillets on it. Oh, I didn't. Yep, so now they all look in there. What do you think, Ben? Was that useful? That should be useful to somebody, I think. At least so, so just understand that that's how that history tree is, is functioning. It has to be in the end. I think that was a good one. Thank you, Ben. Really appreciate it. Thumbs up if you like this. Thumbs down if you don't. That's okay. It's just a Sunday. I'm just answering some emails. 
I'm just trying to add a little bit of more value to you. All right.